Chisekedi, Daishimie, and their respective countries, the DRC and Burundi, should seek clarification from Odinga regarding Kagame's aggression towards the DRC and support for Burundian rebel groups like Red Tabara. If Odinga's alignment is with Museveni and Kagame, these countries must oppose him vigorously and advocate for a candidate who opposes conflict in Africa and Western-backed leaders. Will President Chisekedi and President Neva back Odinga for AU Chair? Insights from Museveni and Kagame meetings. Welcome to Africa Flashes. We are delighted to present our perspective on Raila Odinga's candidacy for President of the African Union Commission in this issue. Join us as we explore the events and developments shaping today's African continent. Stay tuned. After meetings with Museveni of Uganda and Kagame of Rwanda, Will Chisekedi of the DRC and Ndayishimie of Burundi endorse Raila Odinga's candidacy for the AU Commission Chairmanship. Odinga's visit to Kigali on March 13, 2024, culminated in a meeting with Kagame, after which Kagame's newspaper reported his endorsement of Odinga's candidacy. Odinga had already secured endorsements from Tanzanian President Samia Suluhu, South Sudan's Salva Kiir, and Kenya's William Ruto before visiting Kigali. This raises questions about why Raila Odinga should have prioritized meetings with Chisekedi or Ndayishimie. There is apprehension that Burundi and the DRC should refrain from backing Odinga, as his loyalties might not coincide with their interests. His subsequent visits to Rwanda post-meetings with Ruto and Museveni could indicate a possible bias. Considering the failures of the EAC troop mission in North Kivu, particularly involving Kenyan troops, it would be surprising if Chisekedi and the DRC decided to support Odinga, Despite their friendship, Chisekedi's allegiance should ultimately lie with the DRC's and Kenya's interests. Questions linger about Odinga's suitability for the AU commissioner role, especially given his failure to secure leadership in Kenya. Moreover, Africa may benefit from younger leaders with fresh perspectives. Critics question who is pushing Odinga's candidacy and why other contenders for the AU commissioner post are not being considered. Chisekedi, Ndayishimie, and their respective countries, the DRC and Burundi, should seek clarification from Odinga regarding Kagame's aggression towards the DRC and support for Burundian rebel groups like Red Tabara. If Odinga's alignment is with Museveni and Kagame, these countries must oppose him vigorously and advocate for a candidate who opposes conflict in Africa and Western-backed leaders. President Paul Kagame's endorsement of Raila Odinga for the AU Commission presidency has drawn both praise and skepticism across Africa. While Kagame's support signifies potential backing from influential leaders and reflects confidence in Odinga's capabilities, it raises concerns about political alliances and motivations. Critics view Kagame's endorsement as a strategic move to advance Rwanda's interests, potentially undermining fairness in the election process. Odinga's candidacy may face scrutiny due to its perceived political motivations, particularly as a leader of Kenya's opposition coalition. This raises questions about the politicization of AU leadership. The limited pool of candidates highlights the need for more inclusive and diverse leadership options within the AU. As the election approaches, observers will closely monitor the process to ensure transparency and credibility. Many Africans perceive the African Union as merely a branch of NATO on the African continent. Placing Raila Odinga, this gentleman, at the helm of this organization reinforces the notion of our leaders being influenced by NATO. One of our subscribers shared a comment highlighting a list of presidents prioritizing Western interests over those of African people. The list includes Paul Kagame of Rwanda, Denis Sassou Nguesso of Congo Brazzaville, Macky Sall of Senegal, Paul Bia of Cameroon, Alassane Ouattara of Ivory Coast, Patrice Talon of Benin. There are many more that this subscriber should have mentioned. We urge Africa to oppose this emerging form of Western colonization.
And as the former Prime Minister embarks on lobbying across the 55 member states for backing, Odinga, who declared his bid today, will first need to consolidate the seven member states of East African community that comprises Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, DR Congo, and South Sudan. And as civil letter reports, Odinga's choice of AU Commission chairmanship bid technically edges him out of Kenya's political landscape, and he is required to serve for four years that will end in 2028. Raila Odinga's surprise press conference on the lawns of his current residence has sparked wide debate with regard to his future in Kenyan politics. If endorsed to the top seat in the African Union, Odinga will be required to enforce the AU financial regulations, chair all commission meetings and deliberations, popularizing the Africa Union's objectives, submit reports to the Assembly, Executive Council and permanent member states, as well as act as a depository for all all AU treaties and legal instruments. How are you, sir? Welcome, welcome to Kenya. This place is called Mora Moranga. AU Commission Chair Post elevates the holder to a near head of state, with the office holder being a key player in major international happenings, including elections, conflicts and development, not only in Africa, but globally. A document seen by Citizen TV on the Code of Conduct for Holders of the State Office suggests that Odinga will be forced to take a back seat in Kenya's politics and engage a neutral gear in political contests across Africa. In the AU Code of Ethics and Regulations, one is barred from any other appointment to a public office unless upon resignation. If endorsed by the 55 member states, Odinga will only retain his rights to vote in Kenya as a citizen, but his hands will be tied and will not take part in active politics. The AU regulations are therefore likely to remove Raila from the 2027 presidential race should he win the chairmanship, since the earliest he will assume office will be January 2025 and will serve for four years, which means his term will end in 2028 after the country's 2027 polls. Odinga is now relying on his continental networks to bolster his bid having served as AU High Representative on Infrastructure Development in Africa. <laughs>